we stood there. She was on the dresser, and I was standing next to her on the floor, so we were almost eye to eye. We quietly stuck glow-in-the-dark star stickers on her wall. These weren't the high-quality science museum star stickers. They were more the discount party supply stickers, and she was having trouble getting them off the sheet. Then, in a moment of frustration, it just popped out of her little three-and-a-half-year-old mouth. Fuck. <laughs> I looked over at her. This was a parenting test of the first order. <laughs> so much would depend on how I responded to her. <laughs> no, she probably wouldn't remember standing there with me, but there was a good chance of her remembering the feeling she could or could not share her frustration with me. I took a breath. Here, let me help you, I said. I took the sticker sheet from her little baby hands, the kind with the dimples where the knuckles will one day be, and peeled off a star for her. I had no doubt she learned this word at home. <laughs> her father and I never stopped cussing, even after we had kids, though we did tone it down a bit. We primarily stick to the big three, shit, damn, and fuck and combinations thereof. <laughs> Still, to start out with your first cuss word as the big daddy of them all is something. <laughs> I was proud of her. <laughs> I did nothing of the sort myself. There was no cussing in my house growing up, nor were there stickers on the wall for that matter. It would have messed up the floral wallpaper. I did overhear dad say damn once in conversation with a neighbor, but I dismissed it as dad trying to sound cool, just like the kids at school. It never occurred to me that it was a choice he made not to cuss around us kids. But mom just did not cuss. Not only did my mom not cuss, she didn't want us to be ugly. She wasn't talking about physical appearances with that word. No, she meant talking about unpleasant things. Feelings, frustrations, reasons we might be tempted to use bad words. Don't be ugly, she would say. This made a family story about mom accidentally using a dirty word all the more intriguing to me. <laughs> it was a cautionary tale about using words you don't know, but the specifics were always left out. My brothers and I pleaded and pleaded with my dad to tell us what the word was. Finally, once we were grown, he told us. It was 1968, <laughs> but in small town South Carolina, it was culturally much closer to 1958 than it was to 1970. My dad was a newly minted PhD, and he and my elementary school teacher mother were hosting the college dean and his wife for dinner. My mom was a sheltered Methodist minister's daughter, though she fancied herself rather worldly after going to college in Washington, D.C., where she and my father met. And my father, while much more traveled than my mother, was not exactly comfortable or forthcoming about certain things, like anatomy, <laughs> like sex, like anything below the waist. It was all bottom. <laughs> so when my mom heard a word and asked dad what it meant, he said, your bottom. <laughs> mom and dad welcomed the dean and his wife to their new home. I like to imagine that one of them, if not both, was wearing plaid, <laughs> that my mom's hair was teased, and that the fondue pot they'd received as a wedding gift was set on the dining room table. I do know that dad and the dean went into the kitchen to make drinks, and mom invited the dean's wife into the living room. Mom, wanting to sound both hip and casual, said, sit your twat down. <laughs> M 
Mom never asked Dad to define words for her again. <laughs> for his part, Dad persisted in using bottom indiscriminately, all while my brothers and I were growing up, as though we children all came with interchangeable Kendall nothingness. And so I grew up avoiding dirty words and being ugly. Of course, this limited what I could share with my mother. It seemed that so much of adolescence, and junior high especially, fell into the ugly category. I learned to avoid discussing uncomfortable topics for fear of seeing my mother squirm through a discussion of something ugly. In fact, my first cuss word was a misunderstanding rather than an attempt at self-expression. In seventh grade, the afternoon school bus driver was a big high school student named Dwayne. My survival strategy on the bus was invisibility, as invisible as a bookworm with a home perm and homemade clothes could be. One day, I dropped my books as I was trying to get off the school bus. Exasperated, I said, shoot. Dwayne started laughing and laughing. He was convinced that I had just said shit. I protested, but it was in vain. And every day after that, I had to say shit as a password to get him to open the bus door for me <laughs> for the next three years. <laughs> I never told my parents. It was far too ugly. But as I grew older, I appreciated the freedom that expressing the ugly gave me. To give voice to the frustrations, long, large and small, to emphasize the awesome, to articulate the sexy, and even give voice to the uncomfortable. I could be ugly and live to tell the tale. The world didn't end with a dirty word. Except that the world does end, for us individually, that is. Forty years, almost exactly, after the twat night, <laughs> I finally heard my mother cuss. She had just been diagnosed cholangiocarcinoma, a word far uglier than any I had encountered in junior high. The doctor said she had six months to live, if she was lucky. My husband's son and I, plus the wee embryo I was carrying in me at the time, flew across the country to be with her as soon as we heard. Dad and Mom picked us up from the airport. In the back seat of the car, squeezed between my son's car seat and Mom, I said, oh, sorry, I, I'm sitting on your seatbelt. Fuck it, she said. <laughs> She was simply f choosing to forego buckling up, but her expression of it caught me short and brought home her prognosis to me in a way that Googling the cancer's name had not. Why survive a car crash when the end is already in sight? Fuck it, indeed. Six months turned out to be just six weeks, and that trip was the last time I saw her. And the baby I was pregnant with at the time was now standing to, next to me on the dresser, quietly working on the star stickers. Was my daughter testing me? What kind of response did she want from me? How could I encourage her to be strong when all I want to do is protect her from all the ugliness of the world? Struggling again, she said, these stickers are shitty. <laughs> She cut her eyes toward me this time to see my reaction. I replied, yes, my sweet baby, they are. Yes, they are. Marianne Wilson, everyone.